Even when we can't touch it, we still say thank you. Even when we can't pay it, we still say thank you. Even if we can't drive it, we still say thank you. Believing that you are great and greatly to be praised. So God, move like only you know how to move. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen, amen, amen. You came that I might live. You came that I might be set free. Exchanged your life for mine. Oh, what a marvelous thing. that I might live, you came that I might be set free, exchange your life for mine, what a marvelous thing. What a glorious thing What a marvelous thing You've done It's marvelous Come on, help me Marvelous, hallelujah, glory to God Marvelous, so marvelous So marvelous it's marvelous, it's so marvelous, marvelous, so marvelous, say yes, it's marvelous, say oh, it's marvelous, come on. Say yes, come on. It's marvelous. Say oh. It's marvelous. One more time. Say yes. It's marvelous. Say Father God, we thank you for those who give in this offering today, oh God. And we pray, God, that you continue to bless the givers of this offering, God, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells me that God is not human, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? So for me, I'm talking about me. So there are times in my life when I need to be encouraged. And so I don't look to a human. 
but I pick up God's word because God gives me his promises. And so when I need to be encouraged, the Bible tells me that God's word is that if I lift my eyes to the hill, that he would strengthen me. Uh, when I need to be encouraged, I picked his word up and I read the promise that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. When I need to be encouraged, I pick up the word of God and it tells me that he will never leave me nor forsake me. When, when I need to be encouraged, I, I read God's promises and he said to me that he is Jehovah Jireh. So whatever I stand in need of, that my God will supply according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. My God will do everything that I need for me because I believe and I have faith and a loving and a great and a merciful God. So I don't need to look to anybody else, but the only thing I need to do is pick up the Word of God and His promises and stand on the Word of God because it tells me that He is not a man that He should lie. And what God says He will do, God will do it. Amen. Let us be encouraged on this Wednesday afternoon. Amen. Let us stand and just greet one another with an elbow. Amen. Bless you, everyone.
our scripture comes this this afternoon from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Matthew 16, 13 through 20. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. The word of the Lord. Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning, the dark night will fade away if you speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, message of love. My heart from despair, how you love me and care for me if you speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring you life. Words on the wings of the morning, the dark night will of love to encourage me lifting my heart from despair how you love me and care for me if you speak to my heart speak to my heart speak to my heart to my heart, speak to my heart, Lord, give me your holy word, if I can't hear from you, then I know what to do, I won't go alone, I'll never go on my own, I'll just let your spirit guide, and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Come on, help me sing it if you know it. Give me your holy words. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my 
my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me a holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. I'll just let your spirit guide and let your word. Come on, say, speak to my heart. Give me a holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. Oh, I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. One more time, say, speak to my heart. Lord. Give me your, if I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. Say, I won't go on. i never go on my own. Do let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Oh, speak to my heart. Oh, yes. Speak to my heart. I need to hear from you, Lord. Speak to my I need to hear you speak. Because one word can change my condition. One word can change my situation. Speak to my heart. Speak to my Oh, yeah. Speak to my heart, oh. speak to my heart, hallelujah. And let the redeem of the Lord say amen. Let the redeem of the Lord say amen again. Now shout hallelujah. Amen. I am laboring under some restraints, but I'm laboring. And I preached yesterday morning at our 6 a.m. prayer meeting that um, if you are laboring and are heavy laden, you close to Jesus. Amen. He says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy. And so I'm laboring, but I'm, I'm putting this weight on Jesus. And he will make the labor light. Somebody say amen. Turn with me. Uh, as I'm, I'm walking through the Lenten season. Join me at Matthew chapter 16. We'll pick it up at verse 21. And conclude at verse 24. I, I just love the Bible. <laughs> Amen. And how it reveals God to me and to us. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Are you there? Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. And it reads, from that time. Amen. He, Matthew is pointing out a, a specific place. And from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go. Amen. He must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then, then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of things of God, but the things of men. 
Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him or her deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. This is the word of the Lord. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to deposit in you this word, the assignment. Amen. Go and wave your hand to the Lord and say, I got it. My assignment. I'm ready to go. I got my assignment. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth will show forth thy praise. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And bless me one more time. I decrease so there's room for you, God. Bless me again to preach your word. In Jesus' blessed, wonderful name we pray. Let us all say together, amen. Uh, beloved, uh, in reflection and meditation, the Lenten season is by far my favorite in the Christian calendar year. Amen. I, especially as I have become an adult. I was, I was a child. I loved all the Easter, all the Christmas stuff. From the decorating of the house to the home filled with uh, the smells of pies, bacon, cake, bacon ham bacon and then the gifts under the tree and even today every time I peel an orange I think of Christmas because my mama said they were so poor that they, well they, they didn't get anything for Christmas they got fruit <laughs> and nuts like <laughs> some fruit for all her nine children along with the toys. I, I mean, because I, Christmas was about me. <laughs> Amen. Now that I am getting older, I realize Lent is about Jesus and about what he has done for me. Somebody ought to say, man, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is my favorite time of the year. It's, and it is intensely personal. I, I love reflecting on who I am in Christ. Uh, the full plan that God designed for my redemption. Amen. The work of Christ at Calvary and the intercession Jesus daily makes on my behalf. Anybody know I'm right about that? His eyes on the sparrow. And he's making intercession for me. Amen. And here's the point. Jesus did it for me. I, I, don't, I don't know what he's done for you. Uh, and I praise God that he's done it. But can I just be personal? He's done so much for me. Great things. We ought not have to prod you to worship when we say how great our God is. Amen. In the midst of all that's going on even right now, he's still great. Can somebody praise God right there? And he did it just for me. Jesus did not simply come upon this earth taking on a robe of flesh, becoming death eligible, that he could mesmerize and dazzle with the miraculous. I think we, we, we sometimes are too caught up in that. Amen. We, we can't praise God for the ordinary. We got to praise God for the dazzling. Amen. We can't praise God for the simple thing. We, we need something extraordinary for, for God to do something. But no, he didn't come for that reason. He didn't come just to heal the sick. And 
give sight to the blind and open up deaf ears. He didn't come simply to walk uh, on water or give walking power to the paralyzed or feed the multitude. He didn't come just to calm the raging seas or raise folk from the dead. His assignment was to reconcile the sinner to God. Whew, I just got a quickening. You didn't get it. I got it. Amen. It went all the way down to the lower parts of my thigh. Amen. Because I am chief among that group. Amen, somebody. He came so that the holy would reconcile the unholy back to God. The righteous for the unrighteous. And this saving work would be accomplished by way of suffering and death on the cross. Matthew chapter 16, beloved, very much a pivotal point in the gospel writing. There is excitement. There is jubilation at the unfolding of Jesus' ministry, chapter 1 through chapter 16. By the time we get to chapter 16, Jesus is a rock star. Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, did the Broadway musical Jesus Christ Superstar. Amen. And by the time we get to verse 13, Jesus' popularity has covered the region. His fame or his infamy, depending on what side of the spiritual liberation and spiritual correctness you were sitting on at the time, you were either excited and given hope because of Jesus and his ministry, or it riled you up. And you saw him as a chief blasphemer. And so here at verse 13, surrounded by the statues and the monuments of Caesar, Jesus asks a pivotal question. He looks around and he says to his disciples, y'all see all this? Amen, all, uh, all this. Y'all see those statues and monuments to Caesar? And I can imagine that they marveled at it. I, I, I've been to Caesarea. Uh, so I, I know that uh, it, it's a marvelous place in honor of Caesar. Then Jesus said, but let me ask you all a question. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am. Verse 14 and following. So they said, so they said, amen, listen, they were all chiming in. They all said, you know, you're a rock star, baby. You, you what happening right now. And we excited to be in your company. They are saying that you are are John the Baptist. That's the first one. He dead. <laughs> they say you John the Baptist. They know he dead, but they say, Jesus, you so effective in your preaching that you John the Baptist. Somebody else said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I heard folk just the other day said, you are Elijah. Amen. He dead. You follow me, right? He dead. Yeah, yeah. Some said maybe another prophet, uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Jesus said to them, all right, but you've been with me. You were there when I worked the works of God. You were there when I healed and opened up blinded eyes. You were there when I walked on water. Tell me, who do you say that I am? None of them answered, or Peter answered first. And I, I like to think it was Peter who answered first because he's somewhat impetuous. Peter answered and said, you are the son, uh, you're the Christ, you're the son of the living God. Drop down to verse 17. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But the Holy Ghost, amen. You couldn't talk this way except the Holy Ghost, amen. 
except my father tell you in your spirit who I am. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against. I can see Peter swelling up. I'm, I must be a rock star too. Amen. And, 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 and I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, you got power, Peter shall be loosed in heaven. I can only imagine at this point there must have been joy in the camp. Amen. You, you, you know, you, you in church and something wonderful happens. It didn't have to happen to you. It happened to somebody else. But you're there in the midst and you can tell the story of what the Lord had done because you were there. Amen. Have you ever been in that kind of situation? There's joy in the camp. And if God could do it for her, he can do it for me. If, if God can speak this over, if Jesus can speak this over Peter, and I'm in the crowd, then I got keys. You got keys. All God's children got keys. Amen. Yeah, there's joy in the camp. This Jesus movement was hitting a crescendo. Certainly, God was doing something in Jesus. And since they were in his inner circle, God was doing something to them. Amen. And then we get to verse 21. Watch the move. It's going to change. Jesus says they're happy. There's excitement in the camp. He said, let me set and demonstrate because they really ain't getting it. He said, the Bible says from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must, must, that he must, he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. I don't think Peter heard the last part. I don't think Peter heard the last part. He, he just heard suffer. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, at the hands of the chief priests and the elders, he heard be killed. He didn't hear the last piece on the third day. <laughs> Amen. Uh, arise. One moment, Peter uh, recognizes that Jesus is the son of the living God, preparing to usher in a new world order. Uh, Rome would be defeated, the temple would be experienced revival, and the illegitimate fake preachers uh, would be put out, and the presence of God would be restored. Amen. Peter, Peter got it. Holy Ghost gave it to him. It dwelt in him. And it was something that the same mouth that spoke truth about Jesus as the son of the living God would become the same mouth that would tell Jesus, this can't happen to you. In an instant, that mouth becomes uh, seized by the demonic. He pulls Jesus aside and rebukes him. Peter, 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 Peter <coughs> rebukes Jesus. Amen. It says, this will not happen to you. Amen. Uh, but Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me. You're an offense to me. You are speaking on behalf of the devil. Isn't that something? Isn't that like us sometimes? We, we at times, are, we, we could be so holy. And I, no, no, not, no I, mean, I mean it. I mean, we could be so right with God, so in tune with heaven, you know. And, uh, and then in an instant, we, we, can, we can belong to the profane. Amen. We, we, can, we can love that which God doesn't love. We can touch that which God would not have us to touch. We would, we would say and go to places that God would not have us say or go. So let's not, let's not be unfair to Peter. Because guess what? There are Peter and all of us. You ain't got to say it, man. I know I'm right. We all, every now and again, get seized by a Peter moment. However, God has a plan. Am I right? 
Verse 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That's your assignment. Amen. I don't know if Jesus said that, but I'm going to put it there. Parenthetically, your cross is your assignment. Amen. My cross is my assignment. We all got a cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Look at somebody and tell them, baby, you got a cross. And I'm not talking about that gold or silver or platinum or fake gold or whatever it is around your neck. Amen. I'm not even talking about the cross that's in your heart. You got a cross to bear. Jesus said, don't don't y'all get all caught up in this sanctified moment of Peter. Y'all listen to me. I'm on my way on assignment. And, and, and on that assignment, first point, uh, you, you've got to spiritually discern it. You, you can't look at this thing in the natural. If you look at this thing in the natural, your praise, your prayer, even your ministry can be defeated once you come up against the adversary. Amen. Have you ever been at a place or at a point when you are so attacked by the enemy that you begin to question, how could this be happening to me? Amen. How, how, how could my mama get sick and die? How, how, how could my father get a stroke and die? How, 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 how is it that my husband or my wife is now on? How, how is it that I can't pay my bills? How, how, how is it that I'm sick in my body? How is it that the, my enemies are getting on my last cotton pick a nerve? This ain't supposed to happen to me. It's supposed to happen to somebody else. But when you discern your assignment spiritually, that this is the work of the Lord, then you know every trial and every tribulation has come to make you strong. Amen. I just said something. Amen. Uh, second, secondly, the, the, the assignment must be your desire. Yeah. I ain't expecting any amens, folks. Because who's lining up to be betrayed? In fact, when I'm betrayed, I become quite sorely. Because you can only be betrayed by somebody who loves you. Amen. My enemies can't betray me. It was you, the psalmist said. (laughs) My friend. Who's lining up? All those who want to line up for betrayal, come, come to my right. Amen. That's what Jesus told them. He said, I, I'm, I'm going to be betrayed. How, how many of, of us will line up to become the scuttlebutt of a lie? Nobody likes to be lied on or lied to. Amen. This, this is, I'm, I'm talking some deep stuff here. You have to desire this. How, how many want to desire to be denied, arrested, falsely accused, spat upon? Amen. The folk who you helped are now against you. How, how, many, want, how many want that kind of life? It, it, we're, we're, but Jesus says you have to desire this. If any man come after me, any woman who comes after me, They've got to check their desire. So that's why during Lent we fast and pray, amen, so that our will get lost in his will. That's why we fast and pray. We fast and pray so that we can say, not my will, but thine will be done, amen. We fast and pray so that we can say, by the will of God, amen, I'll do this and I'll do that, not by my will, but by the will of God. Uh, I, I, I will do this ministry not so that you can speak well of me, but I will do it because of the will of God. I will sing on this keyboard. I will preach this sermon. I will usher in the church I'll do missionary work not for my glory I'm doing it for the glory of God hallelujah somebody you have to desire this assignment and if you don't desire it leave it the heck alone 
That ain't even in my notes. It just, it just, it just, it just came up, amen. Some things we need to leave the heck alone when it comes to the design of God for our lives. Amen. Finally, uh, the assignment is your cross. A amen. That's your assignment. Your cross. And, and Bonhoeffer says, Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, that when we spiritually discern what God is doing, and, and when after spiritually discerning it, we desire it anyhow, and we deny ourselves, amen, he says all you got to do is take one step, and right there at your feet is your cross. Amen. You, you don't have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You, 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 don't, you don't have to have the preacher slather you with olive oil. Amen. Till your face is all greasy. You don't have to swing from the fans. We don't have chandeliers anymore. We have fans. You don't have to swing from the fan. Amen. You don't have to speak in tongues. You, you don't have to become an instant tither and even an instant worshiper. Amen. The cross will lead you to that. <laughs> but won't it? <laughs> won't your assignment lead you to be a worshiper? A amen. Sometimes life will beat you down that the only thing that you can do is fall on your knees and pray. Amen. And then believe what you're praying and get up and praise God for what you prayed for. Somebody help me preach. Am I right about it? Uh, your assignment, which is the cross, will make you want to give to God your time, your talent, your treasures, your testimony, and your truth. Amen. Because it draws you nearer to God. You cannot pick up this assignment and do it in the natural. You can only pick it up in the spirit realm. Somebody say amen. And my cross is not your cross. And your cross is not my cross. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah right there. I got a cross. And you got a cross. And all God's chilling. We've got a cross. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. And when you do your best for the master, when you don't mind helping somebody, and you don't mind giving your testimony, and you don't mind giving your time, and you don't mind walking where God would have you to walk. Uh, say what God would have you to say. Uh, help whom God would help you to help. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Then God will mark it down in your account so that when you stand before him on that great getting up morning and he separates the sheep from the goats, you can determine before that day that I am a sheep and not a goat. Goats die. They eat goats. That's called curry goat. But God never kills a sheep because a sheep is useful in the kingdom. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I am a sheep. So when I get finished with my assignment, I'm going to go up yonder where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. And every day shall be Sunday and the Sabbath shall have no end where are my worshipers. Can we give God praise right here? I'm sending up timber. I'm sending up timber. I'm sending up timber. There is a mansion. It has my name on it. I can see it. There is no coronavirus. There is no lying politicians. There is no poverty. There is no sickness. There is no drive-by. There is no sorrow. There is no suffering. I got room in my kingdom for you. Shout hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Let's stand and come. Amen. The devil tried to choke me while preaching this. <laughs> Amen. But it's my labor. And I turned it over to Jesus. I hope you got blessed by it. But don't give me no credit for it. It is the Lord in our midst. Come on, let's stand and press our way. Amen. We've got food for the soul. Now we have food for the body. The altar's open. Please press your way. Reverend Justin will lead us in song. Let the Lord reveal to you your assignments. And can I tell somebody to? Don't look at somebody else's assignment or gift and cover that. Truth of the matter is God put that on you, you probably couldn't handle it. So the Lord knows who he's going to bless, what he's going to bless them with, and the assignment associated with the blessing. Oh, I just said something. Did y'all miss that? Every assignment comes with what? A blessing. Fulfill it and experience the joys of the Lord. God, we thank you for another hour of power. We thank you for this season of preparation. I, I want the resurrection to speak to me come Resurrection Sunday. And so, God, I'm spending time reflecting, denying myself. Some of us ought to desire stuff that will lead to deliverance. Deny stuff, rather. Deny stuff that will lead to deliverance. Can I say that one more time? Is that correct? We ought to deny some things in our lives that will lead to deliverance. Okay? Because that which you're holding on to, God can't use you at the level he wants to use you because we're holding on to that stuff. And that stuff ain't got nothing to do with your assignment. In fact, it's antithetical to your assignment. Amen. If you can give up chocolate now, give it up forever. But that might, that might lead to your deliverance. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the hour of power. This preaching moment. We thank you for our friends and the fellowship of the brothers and sisters who make up this congregation. The hour of power congregation. We're not Methodists. We're not Baptists. We're not Pentecostal. Episcopalian, we're not AME, CME, or AME Zion, we're not Roman Catholic, we're just people who in the middle of the week and midday come here, not for the sandwiches, not for the soup, but to hear from heaven. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. If you're here today and you want to give your life to Christ, you're here today and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, or you're here today because you need prayer. You can remain at the altar. We'll come to you. Rise, my father's children, and go in peace. May the peace of God go with you. Amen. Be safe out there. I was supposed to travel tomorrow, but the Lord spoke to me and said, stay home. First of all, you got a serious head cold. And when you start coughing on the plane, people are going to look at you strange and say, Corona. And so I'm going to stay home and rest. Amen. But be safe out there. We, I'm, I'm walking with my hand sanitizer in my pocket. And some one person said, y'all overreacting. Well, I'll tell you the reason why I do it. It's not, not because we were talking earlier. When it's my time, it's my time. When it's your time, it's your time. How many know I'm right? I preached it on Sunday. We all got a rendezvous. And you cannot change the date. You cannot cancel the appointment. It's going to happen whether you want it or not. However, I got grandchildren, three of them, who live with me. Amen. And they deserve a chance at life. So I'm trying not to bring stuff into my house. Amen. Because I want them to have the same opportunities that I have. I'm 60 now. 
Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking for 60 more years of this God's will. But I'm telling you, though, when God calls my name, I'm ready to go. Amen. God bless you. Our power family. We'll see you next week. That's the benediction. God bless you. That's the benediction. See you next week. Amen. That reverend right there, that blue and white, uh, he can preach. Amen. And uh, I want to hear it. Somebody say amen. See you next week. Come on downstairs and get soup and a sandwich and enjoy uh, the fellowship. Amen. God bless you. Can you all pray for Joe Biden too? Can we can we say that as we're leaving? Let's pray for uh, here in Delaware. We have a right to call him. Joe.